In this video, we're going to take a look at graphing exponential functions. And the method that we're going to use is just the good old fashioned, probably the first method that you ever used as you learn to graph things. And that is choosing values for x, substituting them in, and getting the uh, y's that correspond with them. Then from there, we can graph those ordered pairs and come up with our graph. Now, it's also helpful to know the general shape that we're going to find with an exponential function. And that shape is something like this, where it's going along, going along, going along, and just goes up like that. And the steepness and things can vary, but it's this idea that in this direction, it's going to be pretty flat. We're going to come up against uh, what we call an asymptote, where it's never going to go below that often those fall along the x-axis and it's going to go up very quickly the as we get out here it's going to go up now this can be flipped reflected down reflected um, across but the general idea in terms of what the graphs going to look like it's going to be something like that so let's use that knowledge to go ahead and graph so let's start with this one right here and I'm gonna choose some values for X just make my little t-chart here so X and Y and for X I'm gonna choose negative 1 0 1 and 2 okay those are good ones to choose because they're nice and close to the origin here on my graph so I'm gonna go ahead and fill those things in if I put in negative 1 it's gonna be 2 times 3 to the negative first power. Remember, order of operations says we need to take care of this first. So it's going to be 3 to the negative first. Well, remember, that's just the reciprocal. So it'll be 2 times 1 third, which would just be 2 thirds. So there's my y, 2 thirds. OK. Then let's put in 0 for x. So we have 2 times 3 to the 0 power. Well, remember, anything to the 0 power is just 1, so we have 2 times 1. Okay, then I'm going to put in 1, so 2 times 3 to the 1st power. 3 to the 1st is just going to be 3. 3 times 2 is 6. And finally, put in 2, so 2 times 3 squared. 3 squared is going to be 3 times 3. Be careful there. I've seen way too many 6s come out of that. 3 times 3 is 3 squared, which would be 9 times 2 is 18. Okay, now I can graph those points. Let's see. That 18 is going to be a little big, so I'm just going to throw that way up there above our graph. Uh, we're going to lose the scale a little bit, but we'll get the general idea. So negative 1, 2 thirds. So we go back negative 1, and I'm going to go up 2 thirds, which is going to put me partway between there, about like that. Then, next point, 0, 2, it's going to be right up there. And my next point, 1, 6, so there's 3, there's 6. And finally, at 2, I'm way up at 18. So notice how my graph, I'll just throw it up here. Notice how my graph was going up, and then just, whoosh, it goes flying up very quickly. Now, if we would graph continuing this direction, what we would find is that it's going to get smaller and smaller, closer and closer to the x-axis, but it's never going to cross the x-axis. Okay, And we call that an asymptote. It's a place that our graph comes up very close to, but will never cross. So as you sketch your graph, oopsie, that's kind of ugly. Let me get rid of that. As you sketch your graph, be careful to make sure that you don't cross that x-axis. It's going to come as close, 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 but it's not ever going to cross there. Okay, and then I go up this direction like so. Okay, so there's the graph of 2 times 3 to the x power. Okay, now let's take a look at this next one. A little bit more complicated looking, but still the same idea. I'm going to choose some values for x and y for x and see what the corresponding y's are. So values to choose. Well, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 seem to work pretty well. So let's grab those. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2. 
Okay, I'm going to fill those in, and if I do that, this is going to require a calculator perhaps, 3.5 to the negative 1 power, I figure out what that is, multiply it by negative 0.5, and I'm going to get a big ugly decimal. It's negative 0.14285, and on and on, lots of stuff there. I'll take that much of it. Okay, then... 0. Well, anything to the 0 power is just 1, so negative 0.5, that would be. Then 1, so 3.5 to the first power just be 3.5. Multiply that by negative 0.5, which is going to give me negative 1.75. Okay, and finally, we take 3.5 to the second power, we square it, Multiply that by negative 0.5, and I get negative 6.125, okay? So sometimes these aren't going to work out with nice numbers. That's okay. We can still sketch a graph based on what we see. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this one, negative 1 and 0.15. So that's just a tiny bit off the x-axis right there, something about like that, okay? Then at 0, I'm up to 0.5, so we're not going up quite as quickly as the other one did, but we are, and not up so much as going down. Let's graph the next one and see where we're at. So 1, negative 1 1.75, ooh, do we starting to get an idea how this one might look? Then 2, negative 6.125, so down 6, just and a touch, about right there. Okay, so notice now, here we are, and let's think about this for a second. Is there any way that I can get into the positives? No, because no matter what I put in here, that's going to give me a positive number, and I multiply by a negative, so I'm always going to be in the negatives. So that means this is never going to cross over the x axis. So we have an asymptote right here. And this graph is going to hug the x-axis, get closer and closer and closer, but never actually touch it. And we have like that, okay? And then in this direction, we're going down like so. Now, the reason that it's flipped down like that is because of that negative right there. And also the difference in terms of how it's going up has to do with what's going on there as well. Um, let me show you uh, what that graph would look like if you grabbed your graphing calculator or a graphing utility such as um, at uh, desmos.com you can graph these and all kinds of other great equations there so it's free take advantage of it I, I really love their their graphing calculator so I like to show it off every chance I get um, so there's the graphs. Notice what happens. The blue one is this one down here, and the red one is the one that we graphed first. Okay. Graphing exponential functions, we can do it the good old-fashioned way. Start by choosing some values for x, insert them into the equation, see what the corresponding y is, graph those ordered pairs, and off you go. Hope this video is helpful. Keep working hard on your math. I know you can do it.